I'm Rachel Espinosa. I'm here with Terrell Dew Johnson to talk about art. Um, who or what guided you to become an artist? I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> um, no, uh, I, I think it was because I wasn't good at reading, I wasn't good at writing or anything like that. So I know I was good with my hands. So the work that I did, um, um, I, I, I did it with my hands, you know, and so it was, I was good at it. So I, um, I started making baskets because I, I was fast and I was good and I always liked the process of, 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 of how things are made. So with baskets, it was really, it was fast and easy for me to, to get the material, to prepare the material, then to weed the material. So um, that along with drawing and, 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 and doing other things, uh, I really liked it because it was, it was um, you know, me working with my hands and, and actually building and making this, the, these things. So um, I think that what's really, really drove me to, to do more and to, to um, work with my hands. How has your creative process evolved for bringing your ideas to life? Wow, um, it evolved a lot. Just, just again, starting with, you know, me being ten years old and making stuff with my hands, and then using tools to learn how to, to, to um, develop um, um, methods to building. Um, bigger baskets, um, making them using different material, you know. So back then I just had my uh, a pencil and a paper and would sketch out designs. Um, and then now I'm using computers. So it evolved a lot to right now the computer being a, a tool for me to, to create more different um, pieces, contemporary pieces. I tell people that lasers cut my, my panels for my baskets. You know, they freak out. They're like, oh my God, really? Mm -hmm. um, and, I th and I tell them it's just another tool that I use for my work. I really do like that. People are not afraid to, to, to use that kind of technology. You know, I know, I know for some people, uh, especially um, the consumers, the buyers of the work, some of them um, are getting upset because they're using they're using these technologies, and you know, and I'm like, well, why does that upset you? And it says, well, because you know, they're not, they're they're not using the traditional way. And I said, well, I don't think, you know, I think if my grandparents or my teachers were using able to use lasers and stuff, I'm sure they would have used it, you know, because it's just another tool. That's uh, my next question is, what is the most indispensable tool you use now? Um, the computer. Um, the computer and, and just, again, using my, my, my trusty old pen and pencil paper, you know. But the computer is a new thing for me, and um, I'm still learning it a lot, so I do have people that help me. Um, and it's because of the, the way I've, I've evolved from, from working as a solo artist to working with um, 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 other people, you know, collaborating. And so I, I had to um, learn how to, to work with others, play nice with others. So, you know, working with someone who is an expert and very knowledgeable about computers is one of the... the um, you know, the, the tools that I use now that help me um, um, expand my, um, my, um, my work. Do you have any favorite pieces of art that you've made mm. or that stand out? Um, I do. Um, I always get this question, you know, what's my favorite piece? And um, they're all my favorite pieces, but... Um, the one that I really, really, really do like was, um, well, okay, right now, right now, I guess it kind of changes. It kind of changes because I know when every time I made 
my favorite piece. I know why, you know, just the way I was feeling. I know how um, that mood I was when I was working on that piece and what was I thinking when I was working on that piece. So that's how they're all become my favorite. But right now I really do like um, the penny piece, pennies for your thoughts for me, just because I thought about it again yesterday. I had to think about it and I remember drilling those pennies and you know being excited that I actually could drill through a coin, you know, and it was fun because I was I was literally drilling holes for 3 days on this piece and um I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to work a drill at the time and so um, I would be drilling these pennies and they would get caught in the drill and they would shoot off into the corner and it would break, it would break things. And, you know, it was, I thought it was really crazy and funny, but it, when I think about it now, I think it was really dangerous because they, they really shut off, yeah. you know, and it cracked um, things on the wall and stuff. So, but I mean, it was, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. So I think that's my favorite piece right now, for now. So you work in a lot of mediums, uh, which other ones and what are maybe your top three favorite? Mm. Yeah, well, um, baskets is my primary, um, um, that's what I'm well known for is my basketry, but you know, my photography and my, my jewelry line that I started are probably my top three. Um, photography, I've always taken pictures. Uh, even when I was small, I would get a hold of my mom's Polaroid camera and just take pictures. And so I kind of became the designated family photographer at family events and other things. And I actually started then posing people and making them stand here and making them stand there to make the picture look right. Um, and then as I got older, um, I started learning about lighting. I started learning about you know, um, composition in your work. And um, I just love taking pictures and I love taking, um, using natural light and, 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 you know, manipulating it so a picture will come out really nice. Uh, I started learning a lot about, um, um, my, my favorite is actually portrait pictures. I love taking pictures of people, you know, especially a lot of elders because I love the wrinkles in their faces and, 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 and making them stand out and, you know, I love eyes. I, a lot of my photography, I, I focus on eyes a lot. Um, and so I was very fortunate that other people liked my photography. And so then I started doing gallery shows and I started um, doing work for television and for uh, magazines. And, you know, a lot of my pictures have been in magazines um, I was very really excited that one of my pictures actually got on the front cover of a magazine. And I never expected it. Um, but again, you know, that got me work and I started doing uh, photography for um, movies and TV shows. And it was just because they, they liked my, my photos and so they, they asked to, to use them and I got paid for them, so it was really exciting. But I really do like photography and I, I haven't done it in a while. Um, I think I had to take a break from it because I, I, I tend to get really um, um, obsessive about things and I just go crazy. So um, with my photography, I would buy lighting, I would buy lenses, I would buy these, all kinds of new stuff and I go crazy. But the same with the jewelry. I, I started this jewel, jewelry line and so um, I do beading and I do stringing and um, um, I, 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 I use a lot of the basket designs that um, are considered traditional and I, I, I laser etch them on, on shells and stones and wood and I embellish them with, with beads. So that became really successful because it was allowing me to, other, to hire um, um, community members to help me um, make the jewelry. So it actually helped create um, some income for people that I probably would have not gotten any jobs. So I really like that. And then, then the baskets. But um, I also do other, I, I do paint, I do draw, um, and I've done pottery. 
Um, so, and you know, I, I really want to get into glass blowing. So, um, and I've done it a couple of times. Um, and I'm very uh, um, fortunate that because as an artist, you run into other artists that do other mediums. And so you, you become friends and, you know, you, you, you learn from them. And that's how I've always learned a lot of the stuff that I know is because I've met other people that do that. And instead of going to school and learning this through textbooks, I actually just learn a lot of the stuff um, um, directly from the, the, the master, the artist. And, and, it's really, and I love that, that way of learning. How is your traditional identity reflected in your work, and how do you balance that with experimentation as a contemporary artist? Um, it's really important. I mean, I, I, I sort of go back and forth sometimes, depending on, I guess, the situation I'm in, but for me it's really important to have some sort of aspect of my culture in my work. I mean, because I am native, so I think naturally it's already there. But <clears throat> for a long time, I've been always stuck in this realm of Native American art, and it was labeled Native American art. So every time I showed somewhere, it was always Native American artist Terrell Johnson, you know, and and it was always it was that that sort of I guess gave me that that put me in that box, and I've always thought that my art was more than just Native American, I, I, uh, especially with the contemporary work. Um, because I know at one time when I started doing shows and doing juried into, into art shows, they never could uh, figure out where to put my stuff because it wasn't traditional weaving and contemporary was kind of new, especially in the basket world. And so a lot of them didn't know it, it to class it even uh, a basket. So. And that really upset me. And so um, when I started showing in um, non-Native American establishments like galleries in New York and galleries in San Francisco, um, it was considered just art. And it wasn't because I was Native American, but it was art. And so um, I thought that's what I wanted to do was to kind of break out of that Native American um, realm and go into more of the mainstream kind of thing and um, but it was really important for me to and I think I kind of just kept it to myself that I had some sort of um, aspect of my tradition in my contemporary work so I, when I design contemporary pieces I would try to figure out how am I going to add um, something traditional in it um, that maybe only I know um, and so I always make it a point to when I'm making my traditional stuff, I use a traditional basket material in it um, to kind of keep the two worlds connected. Because I, I don't want to completely get away from the Native American um, realm, and, and, but I do want to break into the mainstream, you know, and, and I don't want to do it just because I'm Native American, you know, I want to do it because I'm a good artist and people like the art. Um, do you think there's a different set of rules for determining what's good or bad for the traditional stuff versus the contemporary stuff? And if so, then how might that be agreed upon? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, again, just going back to what I said about how um, being Native American and being an artist or a basket weaver, because again, traditionally, you know, there wasn't any kind of word for art in our language. Everything was made because it had to be made. Mm -hmm. You know, we had made baskets. We had to make baskets to 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 haul um, wood, to hold food, you know, for ceremonies. And so that was just something that we had to do. Now, baskets are just made mainly for sale, you know, um, also made for ceremonial uses. but. Um, the most part, especially in my tribe, basket weavers make baskets to sell, you know, and um, there's a lot of basket weavers that um, want to sell their work. So they're always trying to um, outdo each other, you know, make a, a different design or make a better basket or 
weave a better um, stitch and you know it's a comp it's, it's a competition but it's um it's a little bit different for me because I'm doing a lot of the contemporary work so um for me it's really important to um to to make sure that I um, am doing something um different you know and for me it's it always becomes a challenge but it also becomes it, and it becomes really fun because you know I'm I'm thinking of incorporating different materials like wood metal glass you know and for me that just uh inspires me to to come up with with different you know um designs and looks and so right now I'm, I'm really I'm really liking working with um, woods and the different woods that I can get my hands on and um, the way you can bend the wood. So right now I'm really into that. Um, but what was your last part of the question? Uh, how might people agree on what's good or bad for traditional versus contemporary? Yeah. Um, Gosh, uh, it just depends on the people. I mean, I, I remember when I used to do jury shows, some of the judges would come up to me and straight to my face and tell me, I don't like your work, it's too contemporary. You know, and I'm like, oh my God, then why are you a judge? You know, I think you're supposed to have an open mind and, 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 and look at the work that's there, but people have come to me and said, well, you know, I like your work, but what do we do with it? You know, how do, what am I going to do with it? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? I'm just like, well, can I use it in something? Can I put bread in it? Can it hold, you know, things like that? And I'm like, well, I mean, you can pretty much do anything you want if you buy it, yeah. you know. But, um, you know, there's people that love the traditional stuff and tell me to my face, how come you don't do more traditional stuff? You know, and then I, uh, then I get other people saying, I love your contemporary work. You know, make more, make more. So um, I, I don't usually go by that. I usually just go by what I want to do. And I think I'm very fortunate that at this time, I'm able to do that. You know, I don't have to um, work my ass off to, to make a basket to pay my my rent or to buy food, you know, I'm very, I'm, um, I'm very fortunate that, you know, my pieces that I make sell and then they're on the high end of the spectrum and, you know, they're, they're represented by galleries and uh, people that, you know, understand what I'm doing and are, are um, in the forefront talk, um, representing my work. Um, do you approach making your art differently from how you approach the work you do on food sovereignty? No, I think it's all the same. I think it's just a work um, ethic that I've developed. And it's just um, the way I, I, I do my, my act, um, activism um, is because it, there's a need for it. There's a purpose for it. So I, I sort of take that same approach with my work. You know, there's a purpose for me making a basket a certain way. And it's either because I have a feeling or I was inspired by something, you know, and um, I use that in all the stuff that I do. If it's my artwork or if it's my activism, it's because I'm inspired and feel that, that you have to do it, you know, and so I, I and, and, I, and I do them differently as far as um, I just do it. You know, I don't wait for anybody. I don't, um, you know, wait for someone to tell me to do it. it you know, I, I, I always been a, per, a, a person that if you see something that needs to be done, you do it. You know, and you do anything you can to get it done. Uh, you mentor a lot of Autumn to learn basket making. So why is that important to you? It was really important for me to um, teach 
um, and, and mentor um, people, young people especially, but been, because it was a promise that I had made to my teachers that I was going to pass it on. And, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate to have people take me under their wings and teach me what they, they um, had to teach. And I was very fortunate that a lot of these people did that because I've, I've known and seen people that just are not wanting to do that or can't do that, you know. And I always, I always felt bad about that because they had, they had this gift that they should be sharing and they, they either were um, too guarded with it and stingy with it, you know, and I always think, well, it's a shame because who's going to do the stuff once you are gone, you know? And for me, um, I've always just been able to pay it forward and, and wanting to mentor and teach other people because that was done to me. And again, I was very lucky that I had people that were willing to do that. And that's all I, I can do. And you know, for myself, I the more the the more people that know how to do the stuff that you do, the better I think the world will be. <laughs> so, I, I that's what I like to do. And what would what advice would you give an emerging artist like myself? Um, to keep doing it no matter what. You know, um, if you're making art to sell it, or if you're making art just to make art, you know use that passion to do it. You know, some people get excited when I'm teaching because then they're, they're they say, oh, I can sell this basket, you know, and, and, and they'll get excited, but sometimes people won't buy their work, so they get really discouraged. And I'm just saying, you know, but that's, that's one of the perks of, of, of making art, but it's not why you make art, right. you know? And so I always tell people, I said, you know, Make art because you like to do it. You know, um, make art so that, you know, for you it's a way of, of, of healing and, and your way of um, dealing with the world. You know, I, I do art to sometimes um, forget about issues that I have, you know, and, and art um, relaxes me. It puts me in a... In a a, a mind frame of 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 nothing in the world is going to bother me, you know, for that time. And I work things out when I'm weaving. I think things through, you know. And um, for myself, um, just I just just keep doing what you're doing, you know. And if you feel that um, you're making good art, then continue to do that. But always be open to to um, other things, you know, um, suggestions from other artists or um, critiques from other artists. You know, always be open to that. Don't, don't, don't take that um, as a um, bad criticism. You know, uh, for myself, I, I always tell people, you know, if you, if you think this is, doesn't look good or um, maybe I should try something different, you know, just, you know, tell me, you know, and I, I can either take it and, and use it or just say, well, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. So. Oh, thank you.